Welcome to the Sage Intact product tour for nonprofit organizations. I'm Bob Shago. I work with Sage Intact product marketing, and I'll be your host today as we take a look inside Sage Intact to see just what makes it such an ideal financial solution for nonprofit organizations. I'll start today with a brief overview of where Sage Intact sits in the accounting software industry. Things like who uses Sage Intact, who partners with Sage Intact, and what the industry has to say about us. I'll point out some of the key challenges we're solving so you can see how they align with your needs. Then, before jumping into the demo, I'll point out some main value points that we deliver. This is going to help you identify how the things I'll show you in the demo bring value to your organization. In the demo portion, which is the majority of today's presentation, I'll walk through how Sage Intact provides nonprofit organizations with real-time visibility, how we increase productivity and reduce costs through configurable workflows and automation, and how Sage Intact provides the flexibility to adapt to the specific needs of your organization, your processes, and your mission. So let's get started. At its core, Sage Intact has always been dedicated to delivering customer value. This focus shows in our continued ratings on G2 Crowd as the accounting software leader in customer satisfaction. Through both our advancements in technology and our customer service, we strive every day to make sure our customers receive real quantifiable value so that they can keep growing and fulfill their missions. Listed here are just a few of the many nonprofit organizations relying on Sage Intact with their financial teams. The list of nonprofit organizations switching to Sage Intact grows daily and is one of our fastest growing customer segments. I think you'll understand why as we get into the demonstration portion today. Intact is an open best-in-class system designed to easily integrate with other best-in-class solutions. This means that you get to choose the solutions that best fit your organization's needs and connect them to your financial system of record to produce real-time reporting and metrics. In every area of our focus, we're surrounded by the availability of pre-integrated partners. We have over 120 partners, and the vast majority of our customers have integrated multiple systems together with Sage Intact Financials. With more than 15 years delivering cloud financial solutions to customers, we've become a steady recipient of industry recognitions. In fact, we continue to be the only financial application that's a preferred provider of the AICPA. Let's take a brief look into why so many organizations want to use, partner with, and endorse Sage Intact by looking at just what kinds of problems Sage Intact is solving for nonprofit organizations. Here are some of the ways customers tell us they're solving challenges and adding value to their organization with Sage Intact. In the area of compliance with federal regulations and donor restrictions, customers tell us that automated reports reduce staff's time in producing compliance reports such as the IRS 990 or FAS 116 and 117. Year-end audits are smooth as everything is gathered into one place with drill-down access to details. Easy auditor access allows auditors to see everything they need to do their job without giving them full accounting permissions. Under the area of stewardship, where reporting on funds and grants to donors is really important, using our resources efficiently lets us focus more on our mission. Customers have also said that providing financial data creates a higher level of stewardship to our members and donors, which will in turn result in larger donations and grants. Regarding real-time access, board members, staff, and volunteers are spread out in many locations, and they want real-time access to their financials. With Sage Intact, if you have web access, you're going to be able to access your financial data anytime, anywhere. Board members and executives gain greater transparency into the organization, into how the organization is performing. Real-time data is presented in a simple to understand format. We spend less time explaining performance and more time looking forward on how to build a better organization. So these growing companies are facing challenges and we're addressing those challenges as we build out the technology and services of the Sage Intact Financial Solution. Our clients tell us that their businesses are forever changed with Sage Intact. Why do they love us? Two reasons. First, we make their businesses more efficient. By automating processes, improving oversight and controls, and increasing accuracy and compliance, we simply make their businesses run better. This is the every day, every week, every month stuff. With Intact, we keep your factory running more efficiently while letting each part of the organization use the best tools for their part of the job. But that's not enough. Second, we also empower them to drive performance and growth. 
As financial managers, you're asked to do more than execute a process. You're expected to provide information, valuable information, to run your organization better. Lots of solutions give you a snapshot dashboard of metrics. Only Sage Intact lets you dig deeper to understand the true dynamics of your organization. Only Sage Intact provides visibility into both your financial and operating data, letting you make better long-term strategic decisions. And we're flexible. Growth companies such as yours are dynamic. As your needs change, so does Sage Intact. We help you manage your business for the long term. Efficiency plus growth. With Sage Intact, you get both. At some point, you need to answer the question of return on investment. Organizations run on Sage Intact calculate ROI across automated processes, the ability to lead and manage change as well as current financial resources, and their ability to produce and deliver timely reports to auditors and stakeholders. They've come up with some figures that we've been able to average across our customer base. Our typical customer is able to see more than $150,000 in value annually. This more than offsets the cost of the solution. They generally see an implementation and subscription payback in less than six months. And on average, our customers are seeing a 250% return on investment. Your results are going to be more or less depending on the size of your organization and the depth to which you use the system in your organization. Only Sage Intact lets you take it one step further to study, probe, and gain deeper understanding of your organization across multiple dimensions. Our multidimensional, data-rich analytics let you drill down to get greater visibility. For example, let's say you want to know more about the dynamics of each fund. The top-line numbers are okay, but there's more to the story. With Sage Intact, you can see budget, expenses, cash flow, by location and fund. We let you slice and dice the data to find the underlying trends in your organization and the true drivers you can use to fuel growth. Now that we've looked at what makes Sage Intact tick, the value we add to nonprofit organizations, let's dive into the system to show you how we do it. We're going to look at four main areas how Sage Intact delivers real-time visibility, how workflows and automation make your finance team more productive, how you gain the flexibility to match the structure, processes, and mission of your organization, and how you can keep everyone in your organization on the same page by collaborating right inside your financial system. Before we jump into the demo portion today, I just want to thank our sales engineering team that work with nonprofits for building out all the demo environments that I'm going to show you today. Sometimes when I'm narrating, I talk about the things I built, but it was really the whole team effort. And so I want to thank them for that. And let's go ahead and jump into that demo. So we'll start our demo portion today in our product tour by looking at dashboards. This is a great place to start your day inside of Sage Intact. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through, I'm going to walk through some of the aspects of the dashboard you're looking at right now. And then we'll move to other dashboards and look at the menu of dashboards and things and, and really look at how this relates to reporting. One thing I want to point out right off is that this dashboard is not a snapshot some, from some previous exported data set. So this isn't like a lot of dashboarding tools where they're exporting data, building out a dashboard, then you're looking at metrics from yesterday or last week. This is um, a dashboard looking at live data. So if we were to have changes um, such as changes in expenses, that would be reflected in this performance card of total program expenses. So these, these items look across the top are what we refer to as performance cards. And they're kind of a scorecard to let you see right up front what's going on with your business. So for instance, this first one is a financial um, performance card. It looks at a group of accounts around expenses and it just takes a, the current summary of all those accounts the current total and displays them here. It also shows us um, a comparison. In this case, we're comparing to the prior year. We could be comparing to the prior month or the prior quarter. It all depends on how you set these up. So you have control to configure these and set these up. Um, the, second da the second performance card on the dashboard is pointing to what we call a statistical account or operational information. So we're looking at um, captured information about meals served. So as you capture information into these statistical accounts from your system, you start to keep track of your different programs, different things going on. You can capture these metrics and display them right here on your dashboard. So you have a real view of what's going on in your organization. 
Um, volunteer hours is another statistical account. So these are being entered in and captured. They're kind of like journal entries, but around statistical or operational information. And then this last one is actually a calculation. So we've got expense per meal. So we're taking statistical information of meals and we're taking expenses across that program and we're running a calculation on them to get an expense per meal information. You know, this is all a sample company. So don't look as the, at these as uh, real numbers, you know, $23 per meal might not be great if you're running a soup kitchen. But what we're looking at is examples. I've got a lot of different types of examples built into this company to really demonstrate the power that we bring to uh, the nonprofit organization. So as we look at these different performance cards, all we did with this expense performance card, our expense per meal performance card, was we took the expenses and we divided those by the number of meals from that statistical account and we get this number and again we have that comparison versus prior year and I could look at outcomes from a lot of different areas but let's look at below here I've got a couple of different things notice I've got charts that are visual with these bar charts and this pie chart and if I wanted to look at the data behind these charts I have this when I roll over my this little show show data button and then I can roll again and and I get show data, I show graph, I can put that back. The same thing here, I can look at what's, what's the breakout, what are the numbers that we're looking at to develop this, this chart or this graph. And then I have the standard um, column style charts, what we call tabular charts or reports. And I can look at this in this format or I can use this, um, this view all button and I can expand this to the whole page and get into more detail if this was a large report and I'm just looking at a little a little bit of it and I can look at different information I can break it out in this case we are breaking out the program expense per member cost and so we're breaking out this this dimension of members this item that we're tracking and we're getting our program expenses across that and then we've got um, aggregate revenue expenditures by site so in my organization I have these uh, four different sites and I'm able to see revenue expenditures across those sites and break things out. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about what that is and how that helps us as we look at dimensional reporting. So we can look at, um, you know, here's two down here, we can look at grants comparisons. So I've got the statement of revenue and expenditures where I compare different grants, what's going on with different grants. I'm gonna go ahead and expand this because I noticed that it, it flows quite a bit to, from this bar here, I can see it flows quite a bit to the right. And so as I expand this, the system opens a new tab. And it shows me this whole thing. And so you can see I'm breaking out my revenue expenditures across these different grants that I'm working with. This could be funds, this could be projects, this could be whatever you define within your company that you wanna see things broken out by. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that, go back to my dashboard. I've done the same thing here with a program comparison and a location comparison. And then looking across all these different locations, looking across all my different programs that I'm running. One of the, the great things that we can do here as well is we can create compliance reporting, right? So let me jump over to another dashboard. Let me show you this menu. I've got this flyout menu on the left that shows all our different dashboards. Here I've got outcomes by my different focus areas. And I've created a lot of different samples within, as I said, within this company around the nonprofit space. So I've got church, clinic, foundation, ministry. So I've created these outcomes based on these different areas. I might have, you know, a school and a clinic, um, an association, and I can, I can build different dashboards for those. You've got an unlimited number of dashboards available. I also have role-based dashboards. Um, I can look at what the CFO wants to look at, the controller, you know, fixed asset manager may just want to see information around fixed assets. And so again, I can create as many dashboards as I need for the roles that I have within my company. And then I can limit the access to those according to those roles or to individuals within those roles. And so the CFO might be looking at things at a top level that not everyone has access to. And so we can limit that dashboard to that role as well. And then I have this one I've created um, compliance dashboards. I have this compliance audit dashboard. I'm just gonna point this one out really quick. I could give permissions to access this dashboard just to the auditor. Or, or give the auditor just permission to this dashboard. So my finance team and the auditor can see this dashboard, but I can limit the auditor not to have access to the whole company, but 
through this dashboard, they've got the ability to look at this and drill down into just the things they need to see. And so on this particular dashboard, you notice I've got my statements of activities. This also hand, we've also been able to handle the new upcoming regulations for nonprofits, right? Where we've got um, reporting according to restricted funds and unrestricted funds. And so we've got um, dual reports here so we can see the differences of how we're reporting it across those new reporting requirements. So I've got all my different audit reports working here so that I can look at how everything's breaking down. And if I see any anomalies in here, we can drill down and look into those and see what's, what's happening with those, with those, in those different areas. So one of the ways that we create this functionality is we can go in and we can create um, permissions around any dashboard. So I can go in, this is just the dashboard properties. I can bring up any one of my dashboards and I can create um, both filters and permissions. So I can filter this to an as of date or department or project or grant, any of my dimensions that I track, um, filter it to a certain location. But I can also set these permissions. And in this case, we have an owner. We've gone in and we basically said, deny everyone, or, or so this isn't access to everyone, but allow these individuals. And so we have four individuals that are allowed to see this dashboard and work with this dashboard. One of these could be our auditor. And this way we can give, inside the system, we give our auditor permissions to this dashboard, but not permissions to everything else. We can give them just view permissions to see things around the general ledger maybe around accounts payable and accounts receivable, but not the ability to actually do any accounting, to make any changes, enter any transactions. The way we, f we, we set these filters, and uh, let me go, to one of, go back to another dashboard under outcomes. And we can look at our sample nonprofit outcomes. Is we can set filters up here and I can go ahead and add I have a date filter here, so I could go ahead and compare the previous year and apply that. And I could get a snapshot of the metrics from the previous year. Yeah, things are looking a little better, a lot more, a lot more green arrows and thumbs up and happy faces along the top here. Um, and I could go to any of these. I could go to my analysis views and I could look at a budget position as well. So in this case, I'm not just bringing in accounts or reports with accounts that are of what, what's currently being done, but I'm also looking at budgets, right? And so I've got my actual versus budget under my different program areas of services, task forces, program services, and I've got these broken out. And then I've got some conditional highlighting going on to show me. Notice when I roll over this blue area, it says needs review. So if I have this as my dashboard coming up each day, or maybe I go to this dashboard on a weekly basis, I can see areas that might be having trouble and I want to go in and, and dive in and see what's going on in that area and find out more about that area. Um, again, I've brought in, you know, the expenditures. I can create charts of expenditures, budget to actual, broken out by month across the past year. And I can also look at um, expenditures, budget to actual in a different format if I want to see a line graph. So I, I have a lot of different options with my charts and different ways I can build charts depending on the data I'm looking at. And here I have some dimensions. I can go ahead and say, well, you know what? I want to just look at this according to a particular grant. And so I can just select a particular grant and look at all these um, revenue expenditures against budget just for that grant. Or I can just pick um, a department within my system or within my organization. And by doing that, I limit these, these reports are automatically filtered by those dimensions. And then I can filter and, and really hone in on what I want to look at. So this is just touching a little bit on what we do with dashboards. Um, and these dashboards, one really nice thing here as well is I've got this, I can do this with any of these reports. I can go in and adjust it on the fly. So I've got this little edit report group and I can just dive in on the fly. It takes me to my financial report writer. And from my financial report writer, I can go in and I can make edits to what's showing up, um, whether things are expanded or, or collapsed, um, how much detail I want to show. I can add additional columns um, to, the, to the report, make changes to the report. 
and I can save these and they show up live back within the dashboard. I can also come into here and say, I really like the way this report's running and working. I don't want to change it. I can go ahead and click duplicate. And so now I can just duplicate this report and start working on a duplicate version of this report, give it a new name. And then I can pull that into a dashboard or I can just run it as a report from the report center. Um, and any, any of my reports can be pulled into a dashboard. And let me jump over really quickly to the report center just to show that area. This is where I keep all my reports. Um, I've got this set up for all reports from all applications right now. And we can see them broken out here into different groups. And I can go in, I can create, notice the little star next to some reports. This means these are my favorites. I've, I um, saved this report. Um, I can also go in and I can memorize reports to run and be delivered. Um, and so I can, I can set a schedule for this report and tell it to run on a particular schedule. And then I can send it by email to different stakeholders within the organization. And I can do this with any of my reports to keep all my stakeholders apprised of how we're doing within the organization. So we're going to take a little bit of a look at workflow and automation. So a little bit about workflow and automation. I'm going to jump into an area where we deal with purchasing. Purchasing is where we're handling expenditures. Purchasing flows into accounts payable. I'm going to jump to the main purchasing page here. And right off, we can see that um, purchasing has some data elements, right? We're dealing with vendors. If we had products and product lines, we would deal with those in, in different areas. But the main thing we're dealing with is we have purchase requisitions. So this is our workflow. Notice the arrows. Purchase orders. Notice receive a shipment is grayed out because that's not functioning within our workflow right now. And then we've got create a vendor invoice. And so the vendor invoice is the thing that posts the general ledger. So if I go in here to create a purchase requisition, I just want to, I've got a couple of options. Notice I get this rollover when I click on it. I can create a vendor invoice approval or a purchase requisition. These are custom set up purchasing transactions. So you get to define the definitions. It's all configurable. This isn't something you need to call IT in for to set up for you, but you get to configure these transaction definitions, defining um, how things get accounted for, what items get listed. Basically, when we set one of these up, notice right off the bat, I've got um, the ability, I'll just go ahead and grab this first vendor here. And I automatically get listed the contact for pay to and return to. Now they don't have address information. Let's go ahead and grab Jason here. Jason's Deli has address information. And so this gets automatically filled in for me based on the defaults that are set with that vendor. So you can set up every vendor to have a default pay to and return to. Notice this piece up here isn't filled in with anything yet because we haven't added anything. But if we went to look at some existing bills or purchase orders, we'd see that we get a lot of header information tells us the status. And we'll look at that in just a second. But we can go ahead and, um, I don't know why we'd buy a binder from a deli, but we did. And we'll get some logo pens. They sell everything at that deli. As we scroll over, notice the pricing's already put in here because these are items we're purchasing on a regular basis. But notice something else here, show detail. So I can show more detail here and I've got more information and these are completely editable. I can move these around. I can take fields from here and put them up into the, uh, the main bar um, and, and edit this to the look and feel I want. The administrator does this and it's safe for everybody in the organization. I'm gonna go ahead and close this high details. And I wanna point out that I can choose the project and the site. So these are dimensions um, and I wanna I'm going to go ahead and set this for East Lake, and I'm going to set this against my um, Healthy Tomorrow's grant, and my site is going to be the main site, and it's under, yeah, we'll put this under special projects. And by setting dimensions, I'm really allowing myself to report on these in more detail later. I'm able to filter and get to more detail later on and really keep track of expenditures against grants and projects. And, you know, I can do these independent, 
perhaps this one doesn't go to task. This one doesn't go to special projects. It goes to task forces, task forces. And, and we're also at the main location. I could even create an attachment for this. If I had a price quote already from Jason's Deli for these things, I could go ahead and add an attachment of that price quote as proof of what the pricing is supposed to be for this, this order. And I can go ahead and submit that. Now, once I've submitted a purchase requisition, I can go look at all my transactions. And so I'm gonna just click on purchase requisitions and get a list of them here. Here's the one I just put in for Jason's Deli. I'm gonna go ahead and it says it's submitted and I can go ahead and look at what's going on with this one. Uh, this one's waiting for approval. So once it's approved, I can go ahead and convert it. Here's one that's already been approved. So I've got a pending order to FedEx. I'm gonna go ahead and convert this from a purchase requisition to a purchase order. So now I've got this purchase order here to FedEx and it's showing me all the information. I see that the total amount due, everything I need really is at the top here. I can see what it's for, where it's going, and I can go ahead and post this as a purchase order. At this point, I could make changes if I wanted to. I could put in another reference number, maybe add a message. And so now I have this purchase order. It's brought me back to this list and it's a pending purchase order. And if I convert it again, I can take it to a vendor invoice at which point it posts to the GL and I have this and it creates a bill to the company and accounts payable. Oh, it tells me that a vendor document number is required. So a rule has been set up here requiring a vendor document number with any order. So I'll go ahead and put a vendor document number in there for this example. And do I see anything else that needs to be filled in? It looks like everything else is filled in properly. I can go ahead and post this. And without rekeying anything, I've moved from this request to a purchase order to the uh, actual invoice. And I actually have an invoice now here waiting to be paid and waiting to be taken care of. And this is another area of automation that we see. If we go and look at some of these existing vendor invoices, that are closed, I can go ahead and view one of these older ones. I can see more information about this vendor invoice, total items, transactional detail, transaction status closed. I can look at a history. I can see that this was created as a vendor invoice. I had a vendor invoice approval from Kay Grace on this date and time. And the vendor invoice was created by Kay Grace on this date and time. Payment details, I can see that there was a payment by check on this date. Um, and so I could get to any of this information very quickly to find out um, details about a, an invoice. So when a vendor calls me and says, hey, um, I'm calling up on an, an old bill, I can go pull that information up because I have that reference number, right, that was required. And I can get all this history on what's going on with this bill right up front, saving me all the time of digging through files I'm digging through old records to find all these different things. So if, as I showed you with that first one that was waiting for approval, um, that's another area that there's a lot of time savings going on. If we go back to the, to the dashboards and I go to that role-based dashboard for my CFO, I've actually created a, a little element there. And that's an, We've got this approved purchasing transactions element waiting. And right now it doesn't have anything listed in it, but this would show up on a, I could have this show up on a dashboard and there would be a list of things that needed to be approved by this approver, this manager. I also would have emails going out. So emails will go out to whatever level you set for approval. If you, if the, if the purchase amount requires the, the department manager, if it requires a VP or an executive level, approval, emails would go out to those individuals and they could simply click on those and approve those. So 
one of the ways we've automated the workflow is that you're not running around the office trying to get approvals or tracking down people who aren't in the office trying to get approvals on different payments and requests. And this approval also shows up in a, in a mobile format. Managers and, and executives can approve payments. They can approve re purchase requisitions from anywhere they are on mobile devices, on phones and tablets. A lot of times in a, in a nonprofit, you're dealing with people who are out in the field, but they're also the people who need to approve things. I mean, they work in, in other industries and in lots of different organizations that they work with, but they still need to approve things. And so the approval process here becomes very helpful for this distributed group of stakeholders. We also offer payment automation. I don't have this connected live because it's a sales demo. I don't have it connected live to American Express, but we offer payment through American Express um, in our vendor payment services module in, in which checks are no longer cut in your office, but you can simply send the information out to American Express and they cut and mail checks. Or you can send the ACH information and they pay off of your existing, these are all off your existing bank accounts. They pay the ACH payment um, and save you a lot of time setting up those NACHA files for each of the payments that you need to set up. And probably the most appealing that we've seen in payments is the ability to pay with American Express cards. So we have an exclusive relationship right now with American Express where we've built a corporate card payment system right inside the system. And so with a simple click, you can send a one-time use number to a vendor and they can use that to get paid through your American Express corporate card. So you've got the security of keeping the card number to yourself because they only get this one-time payment number that American Express recognizes. You also get the benefits of the float on the card from the time that you make the payment to when the payments actually do. You, and you get the benefit of any points, um, any money back you're getting. And we've seen organizations using this system and shifting a lot of their payables over to card and actually monetizing their accounts payable system through that automation um, where they're getting enough back from their points and benefits from the card that's actually paying for their accounting system. So I mentioned that we're going to talk also about flexibility. And one of the areas in flexibility that I want to go into is the ability to manage multiple entities under one console. So I mentioned at the beginning of this that I'm on the top level. I'm going to jump back to my dashboards here. And I'm going to go ahead and go back to that. Um, outcomes dashboard for my sample nonprofit company. And I want to point out that these are the metrics for the main, the whole organization. But if I go to this drop down menu up here where it says top level, you'll see that there's multiple entities underneath this top level. So I've created this multiple, these multiple entities and they all roll up into this top level. And there's a couple different ways you can have these roll up. One way is you can have all these entities with a shared chart of accounts, meaning you manage the chart of accounts from the top level and you can only make changes to the chart of accounts from that top level. And as you do that, you're going to allow the, the system to roll up in real time, meaning you've got this continual consolidation going on. And so the metrics you see across the top in your performance metrics performance cards are going to continue to roll up real time. The other way is if you're running across borders and you have different accounting needs in different types of organizations, or maybe you've brought organizations together with, and they have different charts of accounts, maybe for requirements, reporting requirements in different countries, you have different charts of accounts in these different entities. We have what's called global consolidation. So that means with a couple of clicks, you consolidate everything and then you view the numbers. So it's just a matter of whether consolidation is happening automatically with a single chart of accounts or whether you're going to tell it to tell it when to run the consolidations if you have a more global entity. This one's set up right now with all these different entities. And if I jump over to one of these other entities, um, let's move over here to 201, this initiative. It's going to open a new tab for me. And now I've I basically slid into this entity. And so now I'm working just in a single entity, this Colson initiative, and I can see that things are very different here, right? There's not a lot of 
metrics going on. This is just an initiative, but we created a separate entity for it um, for whatever reason. You know, maybe we, we needed a, a legal structure around it that was separate from the other entities. And so we're probably not serving meals here. We've still got the same dashboard, but I could go look at um, a role-based view of this. If I looked at the CFO view, for instance, I can look at reports. Now I've got my standard revenue and expenditures for this, um, for just this entity. Um, and notice I have a, a single revenue source of services because this entity doesn't deal with these other, other areas. And so I can actually create outcomes just for this initiative. Maybe I want to create a dashboard that focuses on the metrics of this particular entity. From here, I can, because I'm a top level or a super user, I can continue to go into any of these um, other entities and look at these same metrics within these other entities. And so I have this ability to drill down and get to the outcomes for the different types of metrics that I'm dealing with. So I'm going to go back to my top level. Um, I don't need to use that drill down menu because the system's been creating new tabs within the browser for each of these. And if you're working in this on a daily basis, you might have a tab open for each of the entities and be going in into each entity and, and working in those entities. Um, the other nice thing about the multiple entities is I can have something running where I only allow a user to, to log into this particular entity. For instance, my health initiative grant one. I might just allow, set up some users to just come into this health initiative and not into my other areas. And they would do accounting just within this organization, within this one entity. And, and they would only have access to this entity and the, and the work they're doing with this organization. So if I had something running in another country or in, I had operations running in different states that really didn't need knowledge of everything else that's running. They just need their entity. I can grant that without granting them access to everything. So this is very different from what you might get if you were, if you had everything under one, say QuickBooks file, and, or you had multiple QuickBooks file where you have to grant them all ac full access to that file. It's sort of an all or nothing. Um, all of this is configurable, meaning all these permissions I'm talking about are per configurable by the administrator. So I can go into any of these users and I can go in and set up my different permissions for my individual users and allow them just to see the things that I want them to see. So for instance, I could go to a, a user. I can also set up roles for users, but I can go to this user here, Paul Smith, and I can look at his subscriptions. I can see that he's working in time and expenses in general ledger. And I can go in and set permissions in time and expenses for this user. I can see that he can, I'm going to expand this just a little bit, make it easier to see all the permissions. I can see that he has access to his own expenses, but not to expense summaries for others. He can simply list and view expense summaries. He's not able to do anything with those. Um, he's not able to create, to reclass, reverse, delete, or edit any expense adjustments. He's, he doesn't see a, uh, a list of a, expenses to approve. He doesn't, he's not an approver, so he doesn't have an approval level set for him. But maybe we want to give him some additional information or some additional work to do. You know, we can open up other things. Um, we can also go down and let him run reports against these different ledgers and check registers. Um, and so we can go into any of our users and set this for them. We can also just set up a role, like perhaps we have a finance clerk role, an AP clerk, and we just set certain permissions for the AP clerk, and then we apply that role to the people that need that role. So it makes it really quick as we grow our organization, as we add additional clerks, we simply apply the role. We don't have to go in and set all the individual permissions for each user. Going back to my dashboards again, I want to point out a little piece that was in the, the CFO dashboard that we looked at. And it was right down here, it was the collaboration feed. I mentioned that we allow people to stay on the same page, 
collaborate in real time within the system. And in this case, we have a collaboration feed for Carly Grace. Um, there's some comments here by Carly Grace. That's the user we have that we're logged in as right now. And Carly Grace was able to was, made a comment on some things that were going on within the organization. She was also to, able to take a snapshot of a chart and save that and store that with the conversation. So at future dates, we can come back and, and look at what was going on, what decisions were being made. And not only this, but in, in the case of an audit, we can keep track of what's happening in different areas of the company. So if we, for instance, we might want to go look at, so for instance, as I'm going through this and I see different amounts of expenditures, for instance, I've got this office supply amount in the operating budget and the actual and then commitments. I might want to drill down into this and see, you know, what, what's going on behind the scenes here? What are the actuals here? And as I look at these and come down here, I see that some are, some are repeating, others aren't. And it seems like this one's a little higher than normal. So I might have a question on this particular line. And so this brings up the journal entry associated with this particular transaction. And I might just go ahead and ask a question. Why is this higher than normal? And that question and any answers that come back are going to be stored permanently with this journal entry. So later on, perhaps during an audit, you know, if the CFO has a question about it, there's likely to be a question from an auditor. We can go back and we can look at this and somebody else can go in here and comment. Um, this was the month we hosted our training. You know, there could be any reason for it, but we want a reason for it. And so someone could post back, this was the month we hosted our training. And now we have a why to go along with this transaction and why it was higher. And this is permanently stored. So the auditor will be able to see this. Anybody will, just, will be able to see this when they come to this journal entry. Now, the nice thing about this process as well is that um, collaboration is actually tied to chatter over in Salesforce. So if you're running on Salesforce and you have Salesforce integrated with Sage Intact, collaboration and chatter go back and forth. So anything that's entered in chatter will be reflected in conversations and collaborate. Anything entered in collaborate on the side over in chatter. And so the front office, those gathering revenue, those working with um, grant providers and, and, and clients and stakeholders outside the office will be able to um, have real-time stored communication back and forth with the people in the back office in finance who are handling these things. Another nice thing about this collaboration is that if I go to my collaborate feed here, so here's this batch, this GL batch that I entered. Why is this higher than normal? I can go ahead and click on that right there. So I just saw it in my collaboration feed. Rather than going searching for this batch that's in the collaboration feed, when I click on this record, it's going to take me to that journal entry. So this is going to really speed up the opportunity to answer a question. It's going to speed up the whole process of, of getting questions answered through the, you know, your month end close, through the audit process, any questions that come up because we've got these links back to the documents that are stored here. So it's just a little bit about how we keep the whole company on the same page through collaborating and, and storing these messages permanently within the organization. That's the last thing I intended to share today in our product tour.